Percy Harvin in an interview came out and said that he was high in every single game that he mm. played on the marijuana. And I assume a lot of people that are outside of the competitive world are shocked by this, maybe taken aback. Maybe the old whites don't fully understand this. Um, <laughs> That was such a broad <laughs> shot at old white people. Yeah, it's probably spot on, though. Yeah, he's on that dope. <laughs> what is that, pot? He's smoking that dope, Diner. The, um, I think it's so interesting the way marijuana has been viewed by the generations, right? And I've always said this, that the reason why <clears throat> marijuana is viewed in such a negative light by a lot of the old heads who are currently in power and creating laws and stuff like that. For a long time, granted, I think that's changing, was because first impressions go a long way. And the first impression of marijuana for a lot of these older folks that are in power was the hippies after the Vietnam War. And the hippies after the Vietnam War were everything that these old folks are not. They were anti-America, they were anti-war, they were anti the soldiers, they were anti the troops, they were everything that was bad in America in a lot of people's eyes, in the older folks' eyes. And they have their entire life linked those two together. They've been like, all right, hippies, marijuana. Yeah, marijuana, studies say it's good for everything basically inside your body. But let's not recall whenever them dopes, hippies, <laughs> were hugging trees out there, wasting society away. They were smoking weed. And first impressions are hard to get over. That is a true thing. Now, granted, as more studies and more science comes out and says, like, hey, this cannabinoid, cannabinoid thing and hemp and marijuana and everything like that is literally very good for you, I think it's something we should think about. It's a much better alternative than pharmaceuticals. It's a much better uh, intoxication than alcohol. It's a much better thing than potentially uh, everything else that you could potentially get into in your world. Then there was the entire thing, well, it's a gateway drug. Do you know 90% of the people that do meth smoke marijuana? <laughs> I'm like, well, I would say 100% of those people smoke cigarettes too at some point. I would say 100% of those people have uh, used the alcohol as well. So to say it's a gateway drug, it's been a lot of propaganda, a lot of PR against it. Now that more sciences and studies are coming out, everybody is realizing that, oh, it's probably nowhere near as bad as we originally thought it was. Here in Marion County, Indiana, actually, it just got decriminalized, which Indiana is a very slow moving mm -hmm. state. So if it's happening here, let's assume it's going to happen everywhere. Which also means the Bible says it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> not only financially is it going to be good, not only biblically is it going to be good, but also it has shown that it works very big wonders for your body. For instance, there's a lot of people that live and die by CBD now. I like to use it a lot. We have a company that we do a lot of work with, CBDMD. They put me to sleep, and they've also made the arthritis in my knees kind of disappear. My old man, who had that thought about the hippies and marijuana for a long time, I think he found out that I smoked the dope, and it was almost a moment where he wasn't going to talk to me for a while. But now that he's on the CBD and his body's feeling better, everybody's kind of coming around to it. And in athletics, believe it or not, there are... A percentage of men, and I'd assume women as well, even though I have not seen them, so I can't speak for them, who perform better whenever their anxiety is lower, whenever they have a much higher focus, whenever they are high on the marijuana. I did not do it because I never wanted the to have a bad game and then there potentially be blame like oh well yeah McAfee's high that's why he can't kick but for some guys it works for them I would assume if you watch the NBA and you can just look in the eyes of some of the guys out there and you go to your local LA fitness the guys that are probably balling on all the little white kids there probably high if I had to guess because for some people marijuana can not only make your body feel better not only can it bring you a little happiness but it makes you focus more it makes you dial in a little bit more it gets rid of the anxiety and the overthinking and the paralysis by analysis percy harvin's the first player to really come out and say that he's been high in every single game uh i assume there'll be more as we continue to go through this i had a lot of friends that i was uh played with who did this on a very regular occasion and it was like all right i take toradol for every game which is a shot that they have no idea what it does to my liver or kidney. <laughs> Nobody has a clue what it's going to do. That thing might kill me quicker than what Morgantown did to me for four years. <laughs> <laughs> Where I had a great time, by the way. Morgantown is a great time, but I abused my liver and body uh, to the tune of $40,000 worth of student loans that I got out strictly Ooh. to party. 
which is a story in of itself. <laughs> <laughs> but if guys are taking Toradol every single game and they're taking other painkillers just to play football, and he's not doing that, but he was smoking weed instead, I don't think people should judge him as hard. Now, granted, the image is that, well, a doctor prescribed the Toradol or the doctor prescribed the pharmaceuticals. They didn't prescribe the marijuana. He got that off a street corner. Well, that's a pretty accurate statement. But if we're getting to point A to point B to make our bodies and minds feel better, if it's a safer, more healthier route, why would anybody judge the guy? And I, I assume there's going to be a lot more of these stories come out as we go. And the interesting thing to me is Percy Harvin – had like chronic migraines, right? Yeah, bad. So marijuana uh, d does nothing for migraines? <laughs> I don't think so. Or is he just smoking the wrong strand? Somebody should have got a hold of him and be like, yo, I got this anti-migraine stuff. <laughs> Go ahead and put this in a bowl right before you get out there and do the whole thing. But I think as we move forward as a society, as we learn more and more about this, I think the uh, devilization? No. Demonization? Wow, I knew mm. it was something. That's a good word, by the way. Mm -hmm. The demonization of marijuana is going to disappear, I think. Just because, I mean, what it does with cancer patients, what it has done for people with arthritis, what it has done just for everyday lives. The little kids that their lives completely change whenever they get CBD and things mm -hmm. like that. I think it's a slow process, but you got to remember the old whites that are in charge had an incredibly terrible first impression with marijuana. So that's where judgment comes from. Yeah, I can't speak to the migraines, but in the interview, he said that he was taking... Seven prescriptions for his anxiety disorder, like Zoloft and all, all of that, um, and none of that worked. So that's why he was always smoking marijuana before games and stuff like that. You know what's interesting? Now people would say, well, <laughs> then is that a performance-enhancing drug because it gets rid of his anxiety a little bit? And I would argue, I'm not sure. Maybe. 